Sim. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow countrymen, my brothers and sisters, it's of a great privilege to speak to you of a heavy heart. But we lost a great man once again in our country. This is the presidential selection service. First of all, I would like to say the, our father, Siki Heaven, rest in peace. We will really miss him. And Ghana is lost a great year. We've lost big time. Nevertheless, I say death is no real Russia if one day, and none of us will escape it. So may he so rest in peace, and we will join him shortly. I have already informed you about the presidential lecture, and I want to apologize to my followers on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, WhatsApp, and all the social media. That they have been asking why it's kept so long. They haven't heard from me the, uh, the presidential lecture and they are waiting for the lecture and things, especially the ones in the United Kingdom and the United States. I see big cuts. We are measuring 100 times before we cut. It's better we measure 100 times before we cut than cutting 100 times without with a bad measurement or bad uh, analysis. So we are measuring properly before we take the step. This is just a sample of the presidential lecture. And the reason why I'm bringing the sample out before we start a real thing is because of the statement I made in the introduction of the presidential lecture uh, thing. It was said that uh, I, in the introduction, I said, I made a categorical statement that it's really beating the mind of fellow countrymen and uh, my followers. And on, on the social media. And that statement is, I said, it is better for an occult, it's good for an occult to be in politics, but it is very bad for a foolish occultic to be in politics. And some people understood it, some too did not understand it. Everyone read his own meaning to it, that brought a lot of suspense. And I think I'm to clarify it right now. Because I received a call from UK after I did that introduction. And a very good, powerful person was asking, what do I mean by it's good for an occult to be in politics, but it is very wrong and bad for a foolish occultic to be in politics. There are certain things we can't rule out completely. There are certain things you cannot do without. God knows what he's doing, if you believe there's God or not. He knows what he's doing. And uh, I think whether you like it or not, it's a matter of fact that there are a group of people that are in occultism that are powerful not only in Ghana or in our country but around the world. And it's acceptable. Currently, I even feel you cannot be a leader in Africa or some part of the world without going through the channel of occultism. Should I even call it occultism in terms of the leadership selection? But well, it, it sounds and looks like that. Like the Freemasons, Illuminati, and the others, most more occults around. You definitely need to belong to a certain group to be part of the associations, to be served and to be assisted, to be heard and to get what you want. But the point is, when a foolish occult is in to government, he creates and he makes occultism very unattractive and makes that word occult which is in the perceived mind of people that occultism is evil, occultism is bad. It makes it look real, it makes it look true that occultism is evil, yes. So when you have a fool who is an occult 
and you put him into a high position or high ranking into government or into any public institution office, he makes the occultism unattractive and he becomes chaos and he does not even help in the fulfillment of the agenda of the occult in good. He rather creates problems, creates awareness, makes people get to know, make people get ready to even fight back and maybe kick them out or kick him out. Belonging to any group, you have your dreams, you have your ambition, you have your vision, you have your reasoning, your reason for belonging to a group. But when your reason or your uh, perception or what your reason and your ambition doesn't have maturity in its operations and in actions, especially towards people, you end up losing it all. There are certain things you can never change, you can never stop, and you can never overcome. Law of karma, natural justice, natural law. You can never be the ultimate God or the God that created heaven and earth. You can't be it. You are only believing in certain ideologies of a group of people that has formed something that is powerful and is spreading and is taking over the world and you are a part of it. You cannot rule the world without people. So first of all, your idea, your manifesto, your agenda, your perception of being in a high place as an occult is to serve humanity. If you don't have this behind your mind, then you will always be a problem even to the occult themselves because you are bringing to the occult world unnecessary enmity, unnecessary struggle, unnecessary fighting, and unnecessary defense of spiritual and physical battles and natural laws and natural justices. So you definitely have to be wise to be an occult to be placed in high places. This goes to the occultic high ranking, the ranks, high ranks in the occult world, the supreme lords, etc. Please, Recheck the people you have placed in high places in this country, Ghana, to mind government affairs and ask us if their reasoning ability and their mindset is in alignment with humanity. Because it's population you want. To rule the world, you need the world behind you. I know eventually time will come, those who do not confine will be killed and burned to ashes. Perceptions. If that be the case, Try your much best to let the people that is placed in high places be more people because the churches, the Heavenly Father God is trying to get people through certain churches that are still legitimate to the right cause of uh, God, the maker of heaven and earth. The occultic two are trying to form associations to live as religious as the church is trying to do by helping each other and things. But try to spread your net. Don't be selective for people who join you. You may not know who may be the right person to be in your group. That would make your group attractive to others. So I, it's just an advice that we should try to make occultism attractive. And if you do so, it's good. And that was my reason for saying it is good to have occult in politics. But it is bad to have a foolish occultic in politics because he will make the occultism itself unattractive and become a problem to humanity. And the minute to offend one person, the law of justice, law of karma will come after you and destroy you and your kingdom, whether you like it or not. Obviously, it's come to a state that this country, Ghana, NDC and MPP are one, they are all the same. They only dramatize the difference on camera or on set or on TV. It's obvious, which we are educating ourselves as ordinary citizens. And as time goes on, we will try to uh, see if NDC didn't help and they are the same church members or brotherhood. MPP2 come, they are the same people with the NDC, they are still brotherhood. 
and we are facing the same problems ahead, then it obviously means the occult world doesn't have people to run the world. I believe you should be thinking very loud about what I'm speaking about. Their heart is, we will make sure no one survives. We will play as God. We choose who lives or who dies, who feeds today and who sleeps hungry, who goes to school and who does not, who smiles and who does not smile. Look, this is childish. I have been given power. I, and you try to boast it, you try to uh, exhibit God and try to play mini God and things, you know. It makes your kingdom very unattractive. It makes your kingdom really, really unattractive and not worthy of humanity. And this is the reason why it's taking over hundreds of years, still trying to get occults on their feet and they are still struggling. Otherwise, if you are not fighting humanity and you are not fighting nature, these things will be over soon and you by now would have possibly, possibly taken over the world and you present to us the God you believe in. But because you are fighting humanity, the people you choose in high rankings and high places don't have the mindset of serving humans. And the world belongs to humans. If we all die, like I already said, death is near we all shall eat one day and none will escape. So if we all die, and you will die, even if you are made of machines, machines break down. Even if you are made of robotic systems, you will definitely break down. Where, where is the world now? Where do we go from there? So I am definitely feeling that the Supreme Lords and the leaders of the occult call your people to order. They are trying to make the world too hard to live in and that will call for revolution. And that revolution definitely will bring you down because nothing can fight nature. Because the law of justice, the law of karma, the law of the natural justice is on the side of the people that cries. You will say yes, but we are also humans. So the law of karma and the law of justice will be on our side. To, who you, to you who cause the offense on the ordinary people to weep, you will struggle, suffer, is the offender. And the law of karma and the law of justice and the law of nature do not stand on the side of the, of the accused or the perpetrator who inflated pain on the ordinary masses and the people, and the ordinary people. So I am advising here that we should try and uh, uh, keep talking. And I think it's now something we don't have to hide again. We have to let the world know that the occult world is ruling the world. The occult kingdom is ruling the world and it's acceptable for human rights, but it shouldn't be the rule that will step on other people's tail, choose who lives or who dies, that you don't think you succeed, you will never have it easy. And so I pray that uh, everything goes well. The other thing is, to the leaders of our country, I am saying that you don't know, you have no idea when you are given power, who gave you the power, you don't know, you have no idea. And if you feel it is wrong for someone to tell you I'm hungry, then I am sorry you are not willing to be a leader. And as I am saying this, let it reflect back in your mind. How many people have called you and told you I am hungry, I don't have money for school fees, I just need 50 CD to pay my child's school fees, and that has irritated you so much that you don't even want to see the person or call the person or pick the person's call again. That means you didn't go through the test and trial, excuse me, the test and trial of a leader. If you were carry or coming up, you could use ordinary soap. Use your toothbrush, scratch soap, and brush your teeth. Then you will understand when someone tells you. I have no food in the house. You won't ask why. And you will not place how much you are losing. Because you know where your wealth comes from. Your wealth comes from God or some supreme being. He's making you who you are. 
And that supreme being wants the world and wants to control the world and wants the people. So your activity and your duty is to serve the people. The organ world is in units. Some are killers, they have to do the executions and killing. Some are financial gurus who does the financial thing. Some are think tanks and in units. So if you are not belonging to the killing zone, and you are standing on the edge of finance, or they put you on the edge of distribution, and you choose who lives or who dies, you make the whole thing rubbish. Look, it is serious that in this country today, some leaders and some people feel you have no right to say I'm hungry. They start wondering, what? How come he doesn't have me eating this morning? This guy is just a useless person. I mean, you see a multi-billionaire, rich man. He doesn't even know what to do with his wealth. And he's surprised that people say, I'm hungry. He's surprised that someone asked him for 50 cities. Then he said, no, this is a useless person. He's not supposed to even, ah, that is a guy calling. I'm not going to pick his call. How come you don't have 50 cities? Meanwhile, it is the ability, the reasoning, the talent, the skill of that person that made you where you are and made you what you are. It is by stages. For the law of karma to bring you down below that person, that is the reason why he has to use his talent to put you there, see your ability and your reasoning and your sense of handling humanity, and if you are wealthy to be there, you stay there. If you are not wealthy to be there, the law of justice brings you below the person who is kept you there, and he will put another person there. For instance, His Excellency Nanado Danko Akupado is a man of substance. He's a super person with all his super background. From, fine, from his family background to his own background to his current state of life. Degrees over degrees, doctorate, philosophy, struggle, everything he's gone through, he has everything. It never made him his excellency until that evil man, that liar, that thief, that irresponsible person, that untrusted wealthy person, that liar, that manipulative, that Kululu guy took this and stamped it on the paper and made the history, the background, and all the certificates and wiles and finances Nana Dudanpa Kuvalu has his excellency became his excellency. So you being where you are is not of your pedigree, your certificate or anything. It's about the vulnerable. The people that today ask for 50 cities that you feel are useless because they can't get 50 cities to eat. They put you there. They actualize and make true meaning of your certificates. So I am pleading with you, the leaders of my country, Ghana, try as much as possible, open up your heart. Our call world, open up your heart. Try to be nice to somebody. At least, if every morning you make it a point that I'm going to help three people, I play three times 30 every month. How many people have you helped? and calculate the 3 times 30 by 12, one year. How many people have you helped? This goes a long way to invest into your life. And the third thing is the phobia of leadership, of the future. Phobia, the fear of the future. Most of our leaders fear the potential of their own children. More or less, maybe because they are not coming from their womb or their own bottom, from another man, they fear the potential and talent of the future which they claim they are in office to protect, they are in office to see to it that the future grows. These same leaders fear and fight that potential of the future that they claim they are protecting. For example, I have used this analogy before and I'm going to use it again. His Excellency Nana Dudampa Kufado is far much older than His Excellency the Vice President Baumia, Dr. Baumia. And at the time Nana was growing up, when he got to the man's age, His Excellency Baumia was born. If they had come into contact at that time and he felt that Baumia has a very bright future, and if we don't stop him, where, and where this guy is going, if we don't stop him, it will be a problem to us. What is the problem? And if His Excellency Nanado has stopped Baumia, 
at his younger age because of the potentials and the visions they see on him. His so many trials and attempts to become president wouldn't have been possible or wouldn't have been fulfilled if he had stopped Balmina at his younger age because he saw that light in that young man. Whoever was born in the 60s, in the 50s, in the 40s, that to see someone born in the 80s and you want to stop the person, then you should prepare for the justice of law on this earth and after your death. Because everything that you stand for as the age of 50, 40, 30, 20s, coming up to 70s, and you fear the potential of the 80s, then you are not well that you call a leader. Instead, everything that you do as a grown up, as an old man, as the 70, 60, 50, 40, should be something that will deposit positivity in the life of the 80s that will take over when you are born because that is nature. You can never write it off that the young will take over from the old. That is the natural justice. Someone will argue that and say, well, but these days the old, the younger die and the old stay. It's because of your doing. It's because food of drug, drug box, drug, uh, food and drug board, drugs board is permitted. Poison to be fed its own people to destroy them, and the younger ones are patronizing. And because you are the cause, you go and import your food from UK, and then you think you are living a life. But nevertheless, still, it is in the natural line, in the natural justice, that the old will go for the young to stay. So everything that the old should do, or will be doing, or is doing, is to see to the welfare of the younger ones to be better, stronger, and powerful than them. So when they go, they leave behind a good nation. These are the reasons why we keep asking, when will Ghana grow? When will Ghana grow? These are the reasons why Ghana is not growing because the old gray-headed man is doing everything possible that he can to see that young man being stuck in his tracks so that he will continuously be recommended as the most experienced, wealthy, and fit for the job even above his retired age and when he gets there and the young man comes with a certificate that is higher than him he said i should employ you so that you be bigger better and stronger than me so they don't these things are all accounting into our problems in the country as a nation that needs to be critically looked at and to be analyzed we the young ones are observing we are analyzing and we are thinking that if this generation will live with that this way, we will live with ourselves in a different way when they are gone. And surely they will go. See Ketade, rest in peace. His Excellency uh, uh, John uh, 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 Mills, rest in peace. Dalati, rest in peace. Count over and over and over and going. Obviously, the young will take over. So do not have fear of the young taking over. But rather, have the edge to train them, bring them up, educate them. And stop standing far with your old experience and your good nature, judging the young from far, pointing them to destroy them. This is the greatest destruction you can do to a nation. When an old man doesn't destroy the reputation of a younger person, it's equal to treason because you are destroying the future. And what you are building, you are building it on a sandy soil or by the seaside. It will never stay. It will be washed away and immediately the storm comes. My fellow countrymen, ladies and gentlemen, this is just a sample of the presidential lecture. We are still gathering our evidences, we are still gathering our intelligence, we are still gathering much information on how we should go about the lecture. This is just a sample. This is just a sample. So make it a date to follow the presidential lecture with the presidential lecture, Richard M. Suleiman. Thank you very much. God bless you.